Hi, my name is Carl Azus. Three things I'd like to share with you right away. Carrots do not belong in cake. Stick shifts are more fun to drive, and Fridays are awesome. Now, critics might call some of that fake news, though not the Friday part. Here are three real headlines to start off today's show. One, the nation of India is still struggling to contain a new wave of coronavirus cases. This is the world's largest democracy. It has the world's second largest population with more than 1.3 billion people. And the number of new positive tests it recorded on Thursday alone was more than 412,000. That is a national and international record of new cases. The nation has also recorded a record daily number of deaths related to the disease, with almost 4,000 on Thursday. Help in the form of medical supplies has flowed in from around the world, but India's government says it's had trouble transporting those supplies around the country. Second headline, Japan is extending its state of emergency with regard to COVID with less than three months to go before the Olympics begin. It's only seen a small fraction of the new cases that India has, but the state of emergency, which will last through the end of this month, is intended to reduce the virus's spread and help hospitals get a better handle on it. There are restrictions on some of the nation's restaurants. Certain businesses are being asked but not required to close. Fans are not allowed to attend sports events. Japan's government, like many others, is trying to balance COVID-related restrictions with the desire not to cause more economic problems. Third, the number of new COVID cases and deaths blamed on the virus continues to decrease in the United States. For the past week, America has recorded fewer than 47,000 positive tests per day on average. The daily number of cases hasn't been that low since last October, and it's declined by more than 80% since new infections peaked in January. Medical experts have said vaccinations and natural immunity in people who've been exposed to the disease are both playing a part in reducing America's cases. 10 second trivia. What is the only U.S. city to have hosted the Summer Olympics twice? Lake Placid, New York, Los Angeles, California, Atlanta, Georgia, or Salt Lake City, Utah? Both Lake Placid and Los Angeles have hosted the games twice, but LA held the Summer Olympics. Our next subject today centers on a nonprofit organization that was founded in Los Angeles 20 years ago. At one point, almost one out of every five students in the LA public school system was dropping out before graduation. In 2001, a former sales executive named Karen Taylor took action to help address problems like that. When she became a CNN hero in 2014, Taylor's organization had helped several hundred girls graduate and go on to college. Now, the number of teens it's helped is several thousand, and it expanded further during COVID. I sat in our spot, clicking my pen. Click, clap, click, clap. I don't know yet who I am or who I want to be. Per my fragment of history, my beloved piece of the past, my grandma. Many of our girls come from environments where they're really struggling with unstable family situations, violence in their communities. Our goal is to really try and reach the most teens we can that are in the greatest need. Nice. Since receiving the Hero Award, we've expanded to include programs for boys and co-ed groups. It's going really well. We're really pleased. We've also developed more programming for youth who are incarcerated or are systems impacted on probation. Since the pandemic, what we see is that young people have been slipping away. Many of them are not showing up at school online. We did 700 wellness calls to all of our girls and a portion of our alums to find out how they were. And what we found was they were struggling with so many challenges depression, anxiety, financial issues, learning challenges. Hello, welcome everyone. Since March of last year, we have adapted all of our programs to be online. Girls have been finding their way to us from Kentucky, Wisconsin, Florida, Mumbai, Brussels. Nicely done. About 100 of our mentors work every week with teen girls online, and we do a lot of special events and readings and a whole college program to help all of our girls go to college. Live a life 
so you have stories to tell. Some of our girls have said to us that Right Girl has been a lifeline for them. Thank you. One of our goals is to introduce girls to all different kinds of writing journalism, fiction, poetry. I love this workshop. We all watch TV movies and plays, but today you get to write the drama or the comedy. We have a screenwriting workshop. We have a songwriting workshop. What is really wonderful about tonight is the process of seeing how a song comes together. In my room all day long. At our songwriting workshop, the singer-songwriters will take the lyrics that the girls wrote that day and then turn them into songs in front of their eyes. I just want to love and lose. seems to do. They see their own words in the hands of a professional. Hi, yeah, no, that was so cool. And there's this feeling of like, I wrote that. I can do that. I just made a song. And there's something beautiful. That was so good, thank you so much. It was still hungry. The face of the mask fell down. We try to give teens the opportunity to read their work in front of a few people, then in front of 200 at our workshops, then in front of 500 at the end of the year season celebration. Before long, they become absolutely fearless and unafraid of the microphone. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just this. Amanda Gorman joined Right Girl when she was 14. Dragonflies hum and vibrant foods, please. Her and her twin sister were part of Right Girl for four years. She was always such a positive, bright light, soaking up everything. She was sort of unstoppable. When we saw her perform at the inauguration, we could see the same things that we really embody at Right Girl, represented in her. Confidence, being willing to really be present. We are striving to forge our union with purpose. Say something that nobody else has said before, because you have your own way of saying things. Over the years, we've worked with four to 5,000 teens over our 20-year history. <laughs> it's a big number. They're doctors, they're lawyers. One is just completing her PhD. It's really exciting to see all the different things they're doing in the world. And more than anything, to learn that our alums want to be of service to their communities, that they want to do work of meaning, is really the most exciting thing for me of anything. My dog would like to know what's on your menu. Things you wouldn't expect to hear at a restaurant. But certain pet-friendly Hilton hotels in Britain and Ireland are looking to reward dogs for helping their owners during the lockdown. So they've devised a menu called Bone Appetit. No, I did not write that. It features doggy delicacies like beef doggignon, mutt roast, and Earl Greyhound. Hilton says it's a reward for pets developed with vets. And though we don't know if that fine canine dining could cause indigestion, we bet gourmet charpays wouldn't turn up their noses at fresh doglicacies like pooly pork, griffon dew, and snickerdoodles with whippet cream. I mean, why wouldn't they want to chow down on some fresh mutton? I'm Carl Azuz, and right now we're going to Paris. Paris High School. It is located in Paris, Arkansas. Thank you for subscribing and leaving a comment on our YouTube channel. We hope everyone has a great weekend ahead and we hope you enjoyed today's edition of CNN 